Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in the last part, not the least of our day, uh, also with the quite interesting afternoon up going. Uh, but before we start our uh, last session, which, which going to include uh, one nice extended presentation and afterwards again short presentations and the panel discussion and then and wrapping up of all day, before that we have to do one thing just to feel enough energized Again, I have a simple question for you. Ladies and gentlemen, all in the room, do you see my hand? Answer yes is taken. You said it silently within you. Oh, I heard this. Anyway, this hand is serving as a level of your applause. Here, if it's down, you're making applause so, so kind. Let's try it. It's down, you, are applaus uh, you give applause so, so, applause so, so. So, so, it's going up, it's becoming louder. Yes, so ladies and gentlemen, very good. Other hand serves for noises, supportive noises, like wow, you who, and cetera. So when it's down, you give ovations, uh, slow one, uh, small one, ooh. Try it, if I'm doing that alone, I look weird. Uh, so, ovations, noise. Ooh. And when it, you did it very good. Uh, when it goes up, we raise our voice. So it goes. <laughs> Wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, our top of the day, the cheese on the cake, uh, Tavi Kotka. And while he is coming, uh, government CIO, deputy secretary, applause, 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 support, 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 general, ministry of economic affairs and communications, nevertheless, Estonia. Hello. Uh, it's an interesting situation. There was way more people in the audience uh, before, uh, like during the last session. So most probably all the Latvians have left, left the room. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, not to be supportive towards Estonia. Um, my talk today, actually, I, I just introduced one case, uh, one example. What might happen if, if uh, the country becomes too digitalized? And it's a, actually, it's a good question. I mean, like, uh, with one hand, we say that we should be like uh, uh, digital by default or like digital only, and then let's 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 turn all the services uh, from paper to digital format, uh, and let's be digital, 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 digital. But are we actually able to deal with the consequences? And today, I have yeah one example uh, where Estonia, which is of course the most Teach the country in the world. Um, why are you laughing? You shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, like it's obviously uh, like what, what we have faced uh, dur during last years. I mean, like for us, it was um, being digital for Estonia was 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 uh, only case how we could actually survive. I mean, like uh, if you if you're a small country, uh, we are not actually physically able to serve all the people, like all over the country. So you need uh, your people, to, you need to force your people to, to self-serve themselves and use e-services, and, and not only in, in public sector, but also in private sector. So that's the, 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 the only, only, only solution. And luckily, we have a very smart neighbor called Finland. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who has tried out, who has tried out uh, several technologies and, uh, and we just had to copy them and, and uh, add some innovation on top of that. So when you saw here uh, our Finnish colleague talking about uh, government EID where they failed, then we can say that uh, we just copied them and, and make it better and then we, we succeeded. And thank you, Finland, for this uh, enormous innovation and, and helping us. 
But yes, I mean, like uh, digital signature uh, using computers and doing everything over the internet is, has been like part of Estonian soul already like 13 years. And I think if you approach Estonian with paper contract, for example, uh, they, they become suspicious. Like, what's wrong with you? I mean, like, what's the reason? Like, do you want to fake a date or something? I mean, like, why you approach me a paper contract? Why you don't just send me the, the digital sign contract over the email? It's much more convenient, it's much more efficient. Why we have to hassle with paper ones? So that's, that's where the society is at the moment. And it means that, uh, I mean, like, we don't have to push other institutions to, to, to develop these services. It's a society who actually pushes those institutions that you need to, you need to digitalize. You need to, you, need to, you need to digitize everything. And I mean, like, Getting everything with like three minutes, I mean like whatever procedure you want to do or, or whatever task you, you, you need to deliver, like maximum three minutes. There has to be an, some kind of app, there has to be some kind of e-service, there has to be something I can just do it quickly in Estonia. I mean like if you, if you wait behind a green, behind the red light twice or two rounds in, in the morning traffic, uh, the prime minister already gets a call. I mean like that's something wrong in, in, in the country. So everything has to happen just like this. And I mean like, we, we actually went into extreme. I mean like, uh, of course you can register the children birth and all that over the internet, but, but even with businesses, um, I mean like we were, we were, many years we were proud that you actually can establish a company in Estonia with less than 18 minutes. And I mean like, like all the countries, advertisements, everything, I'm like, we are so connected, and actually, uh, once only works in Estonia. The one who said it doesn't work, it actually works. So uh, if you want to see it in practice, uh, in Estonia it works, like already many years, 15 years. So, but I mean like, if you think about it, having a company with 80 minutes, who needs that? I mean like, to figure out the company name, takes a week at least. Or even, I mean like, uh, if you know the name, if you don't get it with 18 minutes, but you, for example, you get it with two days, who cares? It doesn't have to be 18 minutes. Or, or does it? And, I, and, and, and the thing what actually happened, I mean like, if everything is digital, it opens up totally new type of uh, fraud cases, cheating, the, 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 the schemes, how I'm like, people who are not so honest uh, try, to, try, try to trick the government or, or, or other companies. I mean, like, the schemes get more and more complicated. And as like, you can open up a company with 18 minutes, I mean, like, you can look like, actually compile totally different, very sophisticated fraud cases. So, and it's very hard for the government to actually uh, discovered those. And uh, having able to create the company in 18 minutes created us a huge problem. So, uh, in the year 2013, uh, VAT fraud increased 30%. So, for example, like in every country, I mean, like government struggles with government budget, uh, we don't have any government debts. The only debt we have, we had to take a loan to give that money to Greece. Um, so, but, but any other government debt we don't have. So we always work with very balanced government budget. And of course, always there is lack of money in, 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 in police area or, or in fire departments or teachers would like to get more. There's always lack of money. And then you discover that if you could actually get rid of those VAT frauds, you basically could double the salary of teachers. And then you start thinking, I mean, like, on, on one hand, you made it very flexible, very easy to use, everything is digital. On the other hand, 30% VAT fraud cases, like, growing. And the VAT income is actually second largest income for Estonian government. So we are talking about lots of money here. And how to avoid that? I mean, like, if, if you think about VAT and, and VAT fraud, Sorry, it's a little bit technical here. 
but uh, there's always a seller, there's always a buyer, and if there is a B2B or business to business deal, uh, one party can uh, like sells at VAT tax, and uh, the buyer uh, can declare the input VAT tax and get the tax back from the and custom. So it's like a normal thing. And in some cases, uh, the seller, even though he sold something, uh, he doesn't declare the uh, tax, or the buyer asks, asks the money back, even if, if he actually, they, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't ask, ask it back. So it's very complicated cases, and uh, for, the, for the government, it's very hard, or for the tax and custom, it's very hard to, to actually analyze and understand uh, where there's a fraud case or there isn't a fraud case. And uh, physically, our auditors, they were able to control less than 3% of all the like, transactions, or like, uh, not transactions even, but, but, but the companies, less than 3%. So even if you double the number of auditors, instead of 3%, you can cover 6%. But still, it's a huge amount of companies you, can, you cannot control. It means that the uh, gray economy grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. So, but I mean, nobody likes gray economy. Those companies who want to be I mean, honest and, 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 and uh, want to actually work and compete in equal market, I mean, like, they hate gray economy. I mean, like, one company pays all the taxes, another company doesn't pay their taxes, the difference is at least 20% already. So uh, this is not a fair market. And of course they start to demand from the government they like, do something. Like uh, there is, there is, there is uh, it's, 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 not, it's not a competitive, competitive situation. I mean like it's, it's, it's a fraud. So, and for us it was a huge challenge because we understood that um, physically, I mean like just adding more and more auditors, it's not a solution. So we saw that frauds are growing, we saw that you are not able to put more people in, into this controlling system, so what are we gonna do? And like always, what we do, we automate, we try to automate. But how you automate uh, this kind of system? And uh, that's the thing where I'm actually very proud. I mean like in Estonia, we don't mix politics and engineering. And, and solving those kind of problems is actually an engineering issue. And uh, as it is an engineering issue, there are not too many ways how to solve that. Most probably there are like one or two ways or like solutions. So our solution was that both sides, <coughs> um, the seller and the buyer, have to declare all their de they, they deals, all transactions, what they have during a month, and uh, that actually go over 1,000 euro. So if you sell something in amount more than 1,000 euro, and we are only talking about P2B deals, we are not talking about uh, P2C deals, or like, uh, so it's, it's P2B deals. The seller says that I sold, and I declare that on that date, on that amount to that other business, I sold. And then also the buyer declares the same thing that on that date, from that company, in that amount I bought. And the government doesn't know what, what, was, what was the reason for the deal. So we don't see what, what was the goods that actually was, was transferred, but we only knew that there was a transaction. And very easy math, if those two transactions match, there was actual deal and everything is okay. If they don't match, it's very easy to control, and we can control automatically, because we just have to go after one deal, not after the whole accounting and booking, but just one deal. If we send an email to both parties, we see a declared transaction doesn't match here, what's the reason? If one party isn't actually declared, or like the, the, uh, the amount was different, like what, what, what's the reason why it doesn't match? And even if, if, if the deals were very complicated, I mean like even if, for example, uh, you bought something and then you resold it to three different places, I mean like always through those simple declarations, you always get the math, like, uh, math, math done. I mean like all the, the left side and the right side always have to match 100%. After the first month, only 45% of transactions matched. 
And then the tax and customs started to take actions. And they went after specific deals. Not the whole accounting, but specific deals. And uh, now we are in a situation where, where the economical like, uh, numbers are actually going down, but the income what we get from VAT increases heavily. So uh, through this optimization, uh, through this solution, uh, we have been able to increase the whole VAT income more than 12%. And once again, I remind you that it's the second largest government income. And if you are able to increase second largest government income, not 1% or 2%, but 12%, it's a huge change. So, uh, and we are proud of that. And, and we see grey economy going down like, like uh, heavily. So, even co very complicated cases, for example, when there was a, some kind of invoice fabric uh, that produced, I mean, like you had one deal and then you used like 30 companies to have internal transactions. And even if you made the picture very complicated and it was, it was not able to discover that before this reform, now we crack those systems like with minutes because it's like automatically checked and, 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 and very easy to follow. So, and companies are happy, people are happy. I mean, like, the economy is going down. But I'm not talking about VAT control system. My point with this discussion is that, as you understood, I don't know if, 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 if you actually uh, understood the core of core thing. The companies are giving all their transactions to the government. All the deals that are over 1,000 euros, they are selling or they are buying. They give this information to government. Because the government explained that's the only way how we can actually kill those VAT fraud cases. That's the, that's the engineering thing. There is no other way. We just need more information. And if we can combine information and start doing these matches, we can go after the bad guys. And if we, if we remove like hundreds, of, and this is hundreds of millions of euros. And if you remove hundreds of millions of euros from the market, it's painful for somebody. So of course there was heavy campaign against it. Because for those who actually cheated, they understood that that party will be over. And they were like so efficient with their lobby that our tech savvy president, who is the president of Twitter, and, and I mean like most of the tech advanced presidents are like, like the best one in, 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 in Europe at least, I mean, like, vetoed our first, first version of the law because the lobby was so strong. I mean, like, think about once again, you give away all your business secrets to the government. I have it. I have, like, with whom you're actually doing business, what are the deal sizes of your business, from whom you, you are buying stuff to whom you are selling stuff. That's all there. The tax and custom has that information. That's the consequences. I mean, like, UK was one of the countries who uh, promoted that in Europe we, we should have a possibility to create a new company with 24 hours. Okay, let's have it. But are we willing to also have that reform in Europe if uh, we see the consequences? I mean, like, if, if, if those, those, those schemes that where we use, those, those uh, I would say, shelf companies or like, to actually to crack those, 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 those very difficult schemes, we need more information. Is Europe ready to start giving this information so we actually could combine it and then and, and start, start uh, killing the grey economy? In Estonia, as we have had those reforms so long time ago already, the companies and the people, they trust government. They understand that Google knows more about their health than the government. They know that, like, Google or Facebook or Apple knows way more than so-called big by the government. And in the end of the day, you have to trust somebody. I mean, like, with Apple or Google, business always comes first. The government, I mean, like, 
they have to take care of their own people. So, and when people have understood that, they trust. And we all understand that, for example, if there will be an enormous information leak from a student tax and custom uh, authority, that, for example, that database is, is, I don't know, somehow somebody gets it. We all know that the reform is over. We need to return back to the basics. But that was the only solution to kill the great economy. So, yeah, I mean, like, we want to do digital by default and digital only in Europe. So, but it's not only good things, it's also bad things. And these bad things, or like very difficult cases, it means that, yes, we can make things simpler, but we need to be aware or we need to understand that there is also a downside. And we need to start working with downside also. We need to analyze, I mean like, there are so many good innovation in our, our member states. I mean like, uh, in, from every member state we can find at least one or two uh, very remarkable solutions that, that, that should be copied by other member states. But we're not thinking about it. We are not, we are not thinking about the consequences. We only see the positive things now but we should start thinking about the negative also and be prepared. So, digital is good. We are, I mean like, we are the advocates of digital. We, we, we will continue to innovate and then the student will push the limits even harder. I mean like, you most probably have heard our e-residency project and then our, our ambitious plan to grow our, uh, to grow our um, population from 1.3 million to up to 10 million people at least. I mean, like, uh, yes, we continue to, to innovate, but we also know that our society is used to, with those hard controls and different type of, of, of information giving, and, uh, but is Europe ready? So, we like one zone. We like the idea that, for example, if a student company goes to, goes to the German market, then currently that company needs to start from scratch because all the credit history, I mean, even though the company paid their loans back, for example, in a proper way last, during the last 15 years, in Germany, they are still blank because there is no chance that German bank or, or German government can get information from Estonia. So yes, we are strong advocates of one's own. We really would like to see in Europe, for example, this kind of law that whenever there is a situation where you can, you accept some information on paper, you always have to do it in a machine readable way also. Or if you give out some kind of information on paper, you have to be able always to give out that information also in a machine readable way. If you could, get, if you could have this kind of law, we could have a solid baseline for, for uh, once only uh, solutions. Yeah, so might be a little bit boring uh, presentation, but my point was to show you that, that uh, being digital is good. I like the thing that that gray economy is going, going uh, down rapidly in Estonia, uh, but I'm just worried that those reforms what we have had in Estonia are like especially big countries, I mean here like UK or, or France or Italy, are you ready to do have a similar type of, of, of information systems or solutions? Actually one thing why this system is always also very good, uh, it's uh, good because of real time economy. I mean like uh, if companies actually declare this kind of information uh, more or less real time, it means that uh, you can also have a benefit from that. For example, if the company A is in the green list and company B is in the green list, uh, you can return the extra VAT paid uh, uh, back like instantly. You don't have to wait like one month for, or two months. So, so for example, uh, the liquidity of the money, for example, is, is, is way better in, th in this kind of case. I also, what I have is, is the full understanding of what happens in our economy. I mean, like, um, the statistics you get uh, through the statistics department is always like uh, so and so, and then mostly you are like half a year behind. But now we can monthly basis see that how the agriculture area, how they are, work, how, how they are doing the forestry, how, how, how they are doing uh, logistic companies, uh, traveling companies, 
what's the situation there. That information is all like available, and of course, I mean, like uh, we can't misuse it, but but uh, it gives a lot of good information, especially for to Minister of Economy. And so we can actually act, not only react on on economical uh, events. So yeah, thank you for this, and thank you for letting me to introduce one of the examples from Estonia. And if you have any questions, I think I still have two, three minutes to answer them. Well, definitely. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Applause. <laughs> Can you please hang me one, one of the mics, just not ah. for me to run on the stage? Thank you. Oh, cool. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are exclusively, because Tavi is uh, going to go to the airplane afterwards, we are exclusively taking questions uh, for Tavi Kotka now. <clears throat> which means that uh, if you have some, I have some, so I will give with my rights of moderator the first one. Uh, in fact, you summed up uh, all what we were talking all the day about. There was digitalization, there was a problem for that. The solution was true, even more di uh, digitalization sure, yeah. and change of human habits, because they were available to trust more to the government. Is this solution like this somehow uh, in combining with the, that you are very effective and small state at the same time? Can it be used and tried to use in, uh, in the state where economies are bigger? Are there some correlation in between that or no? People can take your instrument and just put on their own country. And a small remark, you're happy about clever neighbors, Finns. We are happy about clever neighbors. Well, you know what I'm speaking about. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I think Europe is not ready for those kind of solutions. Of course, there are many countries in Europe who, who actually can copy it instantly. But Europe as a whole, definitely no. I mean, like, if you look at, uh, especially from uh, data protection, privacy, laws, point of view, I mean like the things where we, what we are struggling on a, European le on, on a European level there, I mean like we still are afraid of our governments and we are not afraid of Google for example if you look at our current uh, privacy and data protection laws, I mean like so the, the discussion level is different and then, then, then before Europe solves those questions and before Europe uh, starts to think about uh, like if, if Europe shouldn't uh, mix the policy and then engineering. I mean, like, we still struggle with the thing that, that, that in Nordics, every person has a digital name. In South, no. Mm. Because whatever is the reason. But you need the digital name because without that, you can't have any IT engineer. In Nordics, it has been understood. South, no. And as long as we are struggling with those kind of questions, this will never happen on a European level. At least during the next 10, 15 years. But the full potential of the system is uh, if it's totally controlled, including the offshores, the uh, businesses that are made with other companies in other countries, if I'm not mistaken. How you control the cross-border finance flow from this perspective? Uh, you're right, you actually can't. I mean, like, you can see the uh, uh, transaction, or like, you can see the money going out, but, uh, or money coming in. Uh, but, but you can't control that, and that's a problem. I mean, like, if together in Europe, at least even, I know that, for example, between Latvia and Finland, we are doing very close uh, partnership, but, but yes, if you could have this system Europe-wide, would be very wise. But that's the point, I mean, like, of, so, of course we can't control offshores, but as I said, now it's automated, the control is automated, so the auditors actually who wasted their time to, to spend on, 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 on everyday controlling, now can focus more on offshore. So okay. it's still, I mean, like, it's, it, it solves, solves the problem. I mean, like, and of course, there is no 100% uh, solution, but still, 98, 99 is already good. And you are, uh, like, uh, opening and uh, more resource, human resource yeah. for checking other systems. Definitely. Okay. Uh, the questions in the, in the room, quite exclusive, I believe, possibility. I know everyone has a question inside, but yes, wonderful, please, here you go. It's not a question, it's just a comment. 
just to, 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 to inform that in Portugal, south, uh, there is uh, from, uh, since some, some time ago, some months ago, the obligation to ask the, the users, so the end users, to ask for the, to, for the VIT form when they buy services like uh, hairdresser, car repairs, etc. So in the sense that you ask. So in uh, the south there are some steps going on also uh, in that yes. direction to be yeah. able to compare the two sides of the question which is We shouldn't mix this. Uh, I mean like in south it's different system. It's P2C system and it motivates people to collect checks which is a remarkable solution. I mean like if you have a problem uh, in your country, uh, with, with especially the service companies not paying uh, taxes properly, the Portuguese model is, is uh, remarkable. The thing that how you motivate the whole nation by uh, there is a one Audi A4 every week given to the people. Uh, yes, there are a lot it, of it, jokes around it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a remarkable solution. So if you have a chance to observe that, then it's good. But it's P2C solution. It's not P2B solution. Yeah. Yeah, but with this good sign, when we are starting to tell uh, good solutions and, and, and the best practices, then the other best practice is also coming out. So we are living in quite good Europe. Uh, other questions? Because the time is limited and very exclusive at a particular moment. Mm -hmm. Just to say, yes, Europe is full of good solutions. If we yeah. just focus on copying each other the next 10 years, it would be good already. Let's not invent something new. Let's just copy the good practices. <laughs> That's a good headline for the newspapers tomorrow morning, I believe. Uh, if there's, yes, there is. Uh, I'm gonna drop it to you. Excuse me for some personal approach. Okay, now you have to die in. Okay. And possibility to that. communicate. Gabby, can you hear me? I can hear you without the mic. Yes, yeah, speak, speak, speak. It will wake Thank up. You. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, just asking to bridge your presentation a little bit closer to the presentation will be done by wonderful three ladies. Um, what about user experience experts or design thinker experts in Estonia government? Do you have some? Because if people are using your e-services so nicely and so lovely, that means that they are user-friendly. Isn't it so? Uh, who said that they're user-friendly? <laughs> <laughs> then the, you are forcing them. <laughs> no, I mean, like, yeah, that's the point. I mean, that's a problem, and I think that's a problem in every, every government. Like, uh, the government has monopoly. So what it means is that uh, if you don't like our services, you can go to Finland or Latvia. <laughs> and that's the, the, uh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but the point is that uh, I think the governments, uh, in many cases, uh, actually take that approach. And of course, it's a bad approach. But uh, one thing to remember, and that's the thing, uh, what, with what we are struggling in Estonia is, is at the moment, is that uh, there is no user experience with government systems. I mean, like my first iPhone stayed six months on a shelf because I couldn't figure it out that you need iTunes to actually register and make it work. I just took it out from the uh, package and then I couldn't open it up and I put it back. So the first iPhone, the, I'm like, the best UX in the world. And now think about it that uh, the average uh, user, I mean like government service user, uh, uses government services 2.6 times per year. And one of those 2.6 times is uh, declaring taxes. So it's basically 1.6 services every year. And uh, I mean, like, how many, how many houses you are building during your life? I mean, like, you need a construction permit. How many construction permits you actually apply during your life? One, two. So what kind of user experience you're talking about? Yes, I remember, yes, six years ago, I applied for uh, like house permit, uh, construction permit. So yes, I, I still remember how, how, it was, how, how, was used, how, how it was used there. I mean, like, even if your e-bank changes, the, it does some, some kind of facelift, you hate your bank at least six months. <laughs> and you use it, you use those services like every, every, every day, basically. 
So, so there is no point to talk about user experience like uh, in, 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 in a government. Um, the only point is just make it as easy as possible. And the best one where we try to reach now is the best service is if there is no service. And like, uh, there are many examples. I mean, like, uh, already today, Arnis made those examples. I mean, like, the child is born, uh, the government gives the social security ID on, on, on the same time to the, to the child, and uh, still a parent needs to apply for uh, parental support money. Why? We know the child was born, we gave out the social security ID, so why, why, the, the, why that extra move is needed? And if you start thinking about it, I mean, like, uh, the woman uh, gets married, uh, changes the name. I mean, like, old documents also needed to be changed. You can do it like instantly. You don't have to force them after the wedding uh, vacation, yeah. honeymoon, uh, start to work and, and deal with like new car license and uh, like all that stuff. Why? So I'm mean, like, there are so many cases how you can actually improve the situation and actually get rid of services. So the best ones are actually. We think that the best ones are like somehow combined uh, with, with Google, call center, and maybe some, some touching with, on, on a mobile. So even government portal, uh, we haven't, uh, we can't, I, I, it's not official yet, but I mean, like, we haven't decided. But I think the government portal as such is not a good solution. Because I mean, like, as, a, as you're using your services only 1.6 times per year, the first thing, whenever you want to use a, a service, what you do? You Google it. You have a child, you want to go to the parental leave, okay, how to get parental leave, leave support money. You type it in the Google result. So you don't go to the government portal and so on. I mean, like, we have more than 800 services in government portal. Even though, though we have groped them, etc., it's still, if you open it up, uh, the family part, there are like, 120 in row. Try to find the right one. Impossible. So, yeah. User experience is important, but the best, the best user experience is if there is no service. Happening Thank seamlessly. Thank you. Thank you. We have a time just for a short question now, if there is some. If no, then uh, uh, you can keep it for a while. Uh, then uh, once more time, huge round of applause. Arnis, Arnis, please, a gift, gift, gift.